Home price growth, not seeing necessarily a nice boost, or at least not as much as it was. It's growing at its slowest pace since 2015. The S&P CoreLogic Case-Shiller Index marked 10 consecutive months of decelerating price growth. Joining us with more is Yale University professor Robert Schiller, namesake index, obviously. Uh, so, Robert, thank you so much for joining us. So talk to me about this deceleration that we have seen and whether it's slowing down, whether we're going to start to see an acceleration again. <laughs> Well, the housing market, you have to remember, is totally different from the stock market. The uh, stock market is approximately a random walk, and one day to the next, you don't know. But the housing market, it's not a professional market. I mean, it's everybody who buys and sells homes. And so the uh, market has trends in it. Notably, uh, there's also trends in the rate of change. If you go back to five years ago, the market was going up in the U.S. national, something like 10% a year. And then it's been creeping down. This is a long-term phenomenon. A year or so ago, it was 5%. Now it's uh, 4%. In, in our big cities, in our composite 10, it's more like 3.5%. So th those are uh, trends that uh, the, the question now is, will those trends continue? Well, they've been going on for five years, so maybe they will continue. But it's not a disaster. It's not going to be a one-day catastrophic drop. Professor Shell, I'm curious, uh, is there any period in the past where we can look back where we see these kinds of peaks and then the valleys and then the peaks to, I, I realize the past does not tell you where you're necessarily going, but at least it gives you some uh, insight into where you've been. Have we seen this before? Well, I, I like to take the most recent example, but maybe it's a scary example, so I don't mean to scare anyone. But the 2007 peak, it actually started uh, leveling off in 2005. And it, it was going down at such a low pace between 2005 and 2007, uh, or it depends on which city you're looking at. It didn't attract much attention. Uh, but it was already starting to then look like a bubble bursting. And I know from internet searches that public opinion was changing. Uh, and then it just kept going down a lot. That was the world financial crisis. We're not in that sort of mood right now. We weren't so speculative as we were back then. And we're not talking about bursting of housing bubbles. So that's why I don't see anything really dramatic happening. We're only talking about a decline in the rate of increase at this point. Yeah, nobody gets upset when at least the price is still going up. But then you read headlines uh, about people who are trying to sell their homes. And in places like South Carolina, North Carolina, even Florida, or as we say here, Florida, uh, houses are too big. That the whole taste right. that people want, that houses are too big and they're staying on the market that much longer because of that. Do you see this as a long-term trend, especially with millennials who appear to want to rent and not own? Right. Those are important factors. The... Um the boom that preceded the great financial crisis, the boom from uh, actually goes back to 1997 to uh, 2005 or six. Uh, that boom was an enthusiastic one. People, they really jived on it. Their their self ego was dependent on having a big house. That was when they invented the term McMansion. Yep. Referring to, uh, you know, cookie cutter identical. Uh, mansions that were being built and people were inviting people over and showing off their properties now it years have passed and we're we're not we're done with that not completely but we're somewhat done with that we're more into social media now we don't even bring people over to our house we, we communicate with them electronically and some of these uh, people are retiring now or downsizing even you know they don't want the big home anymore it's not fun anymore to be maintaining this big home. And then who's going to buy the house? So this is a worry. It is a worry. I don't see it developing overnight, but there could be uh, actual declines in home prices, especially at the high end. Yeah, you knew there was trouble when they were putting Palladian windows in Tudor-style houses. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, design geek here, I think, uh, on my right. Um, Professor, um, on related to that point, we've been talking a lot here today about the coming Uber and Lyft uh, IPOs and the so-called sharing economy. And this sort of goes into the theme of what you're talking about, uh, this desire on the part of millennials to rent and not own, to have smaller spaces. Do you think that these are sort of transitory effects on the housing market, or do you think this is a, a larger, uh, more secular trend? There's definitely truth to this observation about the sharing economy, and it's changing a lot of things. The big problem is estimating what impact that will have on existing home prices. Right. Uh, the, you know, there are history of uh, technology changes producing drastic. Remember the word ghost town? <laughs> that was a town that's not needed anymore. Home prices can fall to zero in some places. And, uh, but it, it's hard to know uh, what, where we're going. It, it's, it's definitely a problem, though. All right, I'm picturing tumbleweeds. Thank you so much, Professor Robert Schiller, Nobel Prize winning Yale professor of the namesake Case Schiller Index. Thank you. My pleasure.